Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to come here today. I'm Ji Young Han, a new volunteer here at the GIC. Before the talk begins, please make sure that your cell phones have been turned off or switch it to silent mode. Ladies and gentlemen, have you ever heard about Sicily? Sicily is the largest island of the southwestern coast of Italy, which has a rich and thrilling history. Uh, there is a wealth of interesting information to be learned about the island. Unfortunately, today's speaker, Kelly Simon, has a broad knowledge about the island. Would you like to would you like to know more about her her? Then let's welcome our speaker with a big round of applause. July of 2012. I'm a kindergarten teacher at Donald Fajuli Kindergarten in San Jojo. These are my adorable students dressed up at Halloween. <laughs> um, I first became, I've been interested in Italy my entire life. I'm Italian by descent. I'm a third generation Italian American. My great grandparents immigrated to America in the year 1909. And we, my family is originally from Puglia, here the heel of the boot of Italy, the Puglia region from the city of Bari. I spent the summer of 2010 in Sicily, studying at the Mediterranean School of Arts and Sciences. Uh, the school is on a small island of Ortigia, off the coast of Sicily itself adjacent to the, city, to the city of Syracuse, or Syracuse in English. I completed all of my coursework in Italian, uh, took seven credits altogether, a conversation class, an Italian language literature class, and a culture class. Sicily is the largest island in the Mediterranean Sea. It's, it lies off the toe of the boot here. And it's, rough, it's a roughly triangular in shape, earning it the name Trinacria, which is from the Greek for three promontory. And it lies on the west coast of the mainland. It's separated here, whoops, separated here from the region of Calabria by the Strait of Messina, which is about 1.9 kilometers wide in the north. And 16 kilometers wide in the south. This is the flag of Sicily. As you can see, it's red and yellow. The red stands for the region of Palermo, which is the current capital of Sicily. And the yellow is for Corleone, which is an ancient agricultural city. In the center, you can see the winged head of Medusa, with three ears of wheat, and then the three legs forming the Trinacria itself, standing for the major cities in Sicily, uh, Catania, Syracuse, and Palermo. So to give you a brief history of Syracuse, or of Sicily itself, the earliest archaeological evidence of human dwelling in Sicily dates as early as 8,000 BC. The original inhabitants of Sicily were three distinct groups of ancient Italian people. Around the year 750 BC, Sicily became colonized by the Greeks, and they established many important settlements. 
The most important colony was Syracuse, which still exists today. Uh, Greek politics soon became intertwined with the island of Sicily, and the Syracuse, the colony of Syracuse, became desired by the Athenians, who set out on an Italian ex expedition during the Peloponnesian War. Syracuse gained Sparta and Corinth as allies, thus defeating the Athenians. <coughs> Although the Greeks had colonized a large majority of Sicily, there were still a few Carthaginian colonies in the far west of the islands. When the two cultures began to clash, the Greek Punic War erupted. This series of wars is the longest of the antiquity. Greece began to make peace with the Roman Empire in 262 BC, and the Romans sought to annex Sicily to their, to, to their republic's first province. Rome intervened in the First Punic War, crushing Carthage, so that by 242 BC, Sicily had become the first Roman province outside of the Italian peninsula. <coughs> Under the Emperor Augustus, there was an attempt to introduce the Latin language to the islands. However, it, Sicily was allowed to remain largely Greek in a cultural sense, as opposed to a complete cultural Romanization. Here's a map of Rome and Carthage at the beginning of the Second Punic War. See, Rome, the Roman Empire was almost entirely the entire Italian peninsula, Sicily and Sardinia. While, the, while Carthage was a lot of uh, northern Africa. Sicily remained a Roman province for nearly 700 years. A Germanic tribe known as the Vandals took Sicily in 440 AD, but they were soon overtaken by another Germanic tribe known as the Goths, whose conquests began in 8, 488 AD. Although the Goths were Germanic, they sought to revive Roman culture and government and allowed for freedom of religion. By the 6th century, the Gothic War took place between the Goths and the Eastern Roman Empire, the Byzantine Empire. In 535 AD, Emperor Justinian I made Sicily a Byzantine province, and the Greek language was yet again a familiar sound across the, lake, across the island. As the power of the Byzantine Empire waned, Sicily was invaded by Arabs, but they fa failed to ascertain the islands. They continued, they had continued attempts to invade the islands, and by 902 AD, Taormina fell, and in 965, the entire island was conquered <coughs> by Berbers and Arabs. Arabs brought land reforms and improved irrigation systems throughout the islands, which increased <coughs> agricultural productivity. Throughout the Arab hold on the islands, Byzantine Sicilians revolted many times. These Byzantine Sicilians were allowed to practice their Eastern Orthodox Christian faith, but they had to pay a tax and they had certain restrictions on their occupations, manner of dress, and their ability to participate in public affairs. By the 11th century, powers in the southern region of the Italian mainland hired French Norman mercenaries who conquered Sicily from the Arabs. By 1072, Sicily had changed hands yet again, and it found itself in Norman control. The Normans, descendants of the Vikings, came to appreciate and admire the rich, layered culture that they found themselves in. Many Normans in Sicily adopted some of the attributes of Muslim rulers in dress, language, and literature. This multi-ethnic society made Sicily the most notable cultural center in the Mediterranean, attracting scholars, scientists, poets, artists, and artisans of all kinds throughout Europe and uh, North Africa. After a century, the Norman dynasty died out, being replaced by the Hohenstaufen dynasty, a Germanic group from the region of Swabia. However, conflicts between the Hohenstaufen house and the papacy led to Pope Innocent IV crowning the French Prince Charles as the King of Sicily and Naples in 1266. In the year 1347, in Messina, the, the Black Death first arrived in Europe. In 1942, at the onset of the Spanish Inquisition, uh, Ferdinand II decreed all, the expulsion of all Jews from Sicily. 
and in 1860 as part of the Risorgimento movements, or the revitalization of Italian culture. The expedition of the Thousand, led by Giuseppe Garibaldi, captured Sicily, and under the name of Victor Emmanuel II of the Kingdom of Sardinia, Garibaldi declared dictatorship on the island. Sicily became part of the Kingdom of Sardinia after a referendum in which 75% of Sicily voted in favor of the annexation, and that occurred on October 21st, 1860. As a result of the Kingdom of, the Kingdom of Italy proclamation, Sicily joined Italy on March 17, 1861. And in six, or 1946, after the end of World War II, the, there's the birth of the Italian Republic, and Sicily was granted autonomous status, so it's a self-sufficient government in which it ruled itself separate from that of the mainland. So that's a brief, very brief history of the island of Sicily. In 1860, at the, at the Risorgimento, where there was the revitalization of Italian culture and the unification of the peninsula, a large majority of the Italian peninsula saw uh, a lot of modern infrastructure, but the Sicilian economy largely left, remained largely underdeveloped. Thus, it's the genesis of the mafia, and the Italian mafia, or the Sicilian mafia, is the most famous mafia in the whole world. Um, known as Cosa Nostra, which is Italian for our thing, or this thing of ours. They were especially prevalent in the West, around Palermo, where there are large citrus orchards and cattle farms, and where in the East, a lot of the land was smaller and much more developed. Racketeering and extortion were prevalent, especially in the lucrative citrus orchards, like I mentioned, and the cattle ranchers, many people ended up paying money to the Mafia in order for their protection from other vandals and thieves. In the early 1920s, when Benito Mussolini came to power, uh, he was actually one of the most successful people in squashing the Mafia throughout Sicily. Uh, the Mafia threatened and undermined his power in Sicily, and a successful campaign was strike him as the new leader legitimizing and empowering his role. As a prime minister, he visited Sicily in May of 1924, where the mafia boss, Francesco Puccia, one of the mayors of Palermo, uh, greeted him. He, Mussolini was with a police escort, and Puccia expressed his surprise at having a police escort with him when he said, you are under my protection. Uh, Mussolini was rejected his offer of protection, and then Cuccia thus told the people of Palermo not to attend uh, Mussolini's speech later on. So he felt rejected, humiliated, and outraged. And that, that remark has been the catalyst, been known as the catalyst for Mussolini's war on the Mafia. When he firmly established his power in January of 1925, he appointed Cesare More as a, the mayor of Palermo, where, and they went through, uh, he formed a small army of policemen, carabinieri, <coughs> the Sicilian police, and militiamen, and they went from town to town, rounding up suspected mafia members, and that to force them to surrender, they would take family members hostage, take over their lands, slaughter their livestock, whatnot. And between 1925 and 1928, over 11,000 suspected mafia connections had been arrested. So after World War II, Allied forces took control of Sicily, in which they actually employed the mafia to, they, where they appointed them as mayors and other positions of power, where, so the mafia regained power and they resumed collecting protection money to fund their ventures. In 1952, 1956, two mafia-connected uh, officials took control of the Palermo Public Works Office, 
and between 1959 and 1963, 80% of building permits were given to only five different people. So basically the Mafia owned the entire island of Sicily. In the 1980s, uh, government magistrates Giovanni Falcone and Paolo Borsellino came to power, not power, but there, uh, brought, went against the first trial against the Mafia and against Cosa Nostra. This is Tommaso Buccella, and he is the first and only Mafia member to become an informant, and he helped uh, Borsellino and Falcone to convict members of the Mafia. The Maxi trial lasted from February of 1968 to December of 1987. During the Maxi trial, 14, 474 mafiosi were put on trial, and 342 were convicted. This is Falcone and Borsellino, the famous judges. After this trial, there was a brutal mafia retaliation. And both Falcone and Borsellino were murdered by bombs in the year 1992. Um, in June, June 20th of 1989, Falcone actually found a, boat, a bomb in his beach house that he was able to, they, it did not go off. And, but it, in May, May 23rd, 1992, he was murdered by a car bomb. <coughs> Borsellino was murdered uh, a few months later in June, June, June 19th of 92, and his, there was over 100 uh, kilos of, explosion, of <coughs> explosives in his car, where it murdered or it killed him and five other people. Uh, it recently actually has come out that Borsellino knew he was targeted, but he didn't want to have a security detail as he knew that the mafia would then go after his family. Uh, Borsellino and Falcone have become icons throughout the world against the Mafia. And this is actually pictures I took when I was in Palermo of, of monuments of them and actually many other judges that went after the, mon went after the Mafia and have been murdered. In the year 2004, the audio pizza movement was started. Um, there was a group of guys who wanted to open a restaurant in Palermo, but they didn't want to have to pay the mafia the protection fee, and they but they didn't have any way to get around that. Um, overnight, they printed these stickers that um, and stuck them everywhere throughout Palermo, and it basically means it translates to a whole people who pay the pizza are people without dignity meaning that the people of Palermo, the business people, should not be paying this money to the Mafia, because in turn, people who shop there are, and the whole community is just paying and supporting the Mafia. So this movement came about, and there are shops in Sicily, or in Palermo, that um, don't pay the pizza, don't pay the protection fee, and paste a sticker on their shops so that people can shop there, and then they are in turn not fighting the Mafia either. And it's an attempt to get rid of the Mafia in Sicily. Another in interesting aspect of Sicilian culture is the language. It's a distinct language, completely separate from Italian, not just a dialect, but a completely separate language. And with all of the history and all the people that have been in Sicily, it's influenced by Arabic, Greek, French, Spanish, and Italian, with a lot of words from many different languages in the language. The word mafia itself actually is a Sicilian word, which has come from Arabic. Um, from the word mafia itself means swagger or boldness and bravado, but it's der derived from Arabic, from the word mayas. I don't know. Arabic, so I may be butchering that, but uh, aggressive boasting or bragging, or the word marfud, which means rejected. And this poster here actually is a famous poster of Borsellino and Falcone that was printed after their death, 
and translated, it means uh, you can't kill our ideas, or you can't kill the ideas because they walk on our feet, meaning the people of Palermo. My favorite aspect of Sicilian culture is the cuisine. Uh, it's a rich and diversified cuisine uh, due to the various cultural influences over the centuries. Um, and in 750 BC, when Greece colonized Sicily, they brought olives and grapevines with them. So those flourish in the rich and fertile soil. And there's oranges, lemons, pine nuts, cinnamon from Arabic culture. So there's a lot of Arabic influence as well. Um, they use couscous as, long, as well as pasta, but couscous from Northern Africa. And then the pasta, obviously, from Italian culture. And the Spanish actually brought many things with them from the New World, including tomatoes, cocoa, and turkey, and so on. Um, there's a heavy emphasis on fresh fruits and vegetables, and the seafood that's readily available from it being an island. These are two of my favorite Italian dishes. This is pasta alla norma, made with rigatoni pasta and eggplant with a tomato sauce. It's one of the greatest things in the world. And swordfish is also really popular, uh, pesca spada in Italian. And you would go to the market and they have the whole swordfish. They just cut off chunks of it when you'd want, how much you'd want to buy. Um, another important part of Sicily is Mount Etna. It's the tallest active volcano in Europe. <coughs> it stands at 3,320 meters, or a little over 10,000 feet. And it's one of the most active volcanoes in the world, and it's actually currently erupting. It's always erupting to some extent. These are pictures I took when I was on Mount Etna. This is a poem in Sicilian, probably up the mountain, and it's me sliding down a pile of ash, and it's very fun. These flowers that grow in the uh, volcanic soil of Mount Etna are actually used to make soap, and it's very, very popular soap, and this is known as is it the eye of the cow, I believe, and it's from a recent eruption in 1998, and it felt like you were walking across the surface of the moon. And it's just some more pictures that I took. We climbed up the south side of the mountain. You can overlook all of Catania. So my favorite part of the presentation, pictures that I took while I was there. It's so many great memories through these pictures. Um, there's a sunset over the city of Noto, which is one of the most famous wine-producing uh, cities in all of Sicily. They have a very famous wine, uh, Nero d'Avola, which is like from the dark black grape, so it means black of Avola. And it's a famous wine, I've even found it here. So it's exported and drank worldwide. And this whoops, is the city of Noto, where the wine is produced. This is where I not really look here, but this is off um, Ortigia, off the coast of Syracuse, and this is the one picture I did not take this, but um, there's a massive fortress and castle that had been used throughout, throughout history by the various uh, people in control of the island, because Sicily, or because Syracuse was such a massive port, and they had Ortigia as their front line of defense. This is some of the ancient uh, archaeological remnants in Syracuse. This is a Greek church from a really long time ago. <laughs> um, in Sicily, a lot of the beaches are actually rock beaches. There's not many sand beaches. But this was one of our favorite beaches to go to, uh, Fontana Bianca, which just means white, white beach, um, white fountain. Um, and it was a sand beach, and the water was so blue and clear. And this is Cava Grande, uh, famous, the largest freshwater lake in all of Sicily. <coughs> and it's actually where they export a lot of the bottled water from, also. Just more pictures of Cava Grande. 
So this is Palermo's Teatro Massimo. It's the largest opera house in all of Italy, and actually one of the largest opera houses in all of Western Europe. Some more pictures of Palermo. Ancient, more ancient Greek uh, ruins. And the markets are some of my favorites. And in conclusion, this is the beach Cefalu, and it's off, uh, it's near to Palermo in the north of the islands. And it's beautiful. The end. Thank <laughs> you.